Greetings, I'm Mike. This is another chapter in transition. This is uh, uh, the genetics section. This is very basic to this entire study of uh, how humans can adapt to the future. Um, we have genetic problems for three reasons. One is genetic load, one is disease, and the other is that we need to adapt genetically to the future uh, as well as behaviorally. Now, genetic load is a problem that comes in basically three flavors. You have single mutations, a single allele changes, and this, sometimes this can be good. This could be a new mutation that could be beneficial, and it's how species evolve, but most of them are not beneficial. Most of them represent breakages in function, where the gene becomes less functional or not at all functional. Uh, this is becoming an increasing problem for humans because parents are older and they have more of these accumulated as they get older. So this can accumulate over some generations and cause a real problem with genetic load, as it's referred to. What is another problem that is, is what I see as a bigger problem is genetic, uh, what they call uh, copy errors, where the uh, gene is not copied perfectly and you, you get different sections get duplicated or missed. Um, this can happen uh, at various times, particularly recombination, when the, the sperm and egg come together and the genes come together, recombine, and separate. Now there's mechanisms to prevent this from uh, having problems, but they're not perfect. Uh, the third case of load is, is where there's actually extra chromosomes or missing chromosomes. Uh, this would be, uh, the case of this would be Down syndrome. Now most of these do not survive to birth, but some do. And in all cases uh, of these larger breakages, um, you, you are talking about a person that could have health uh, problems all their life. The, the copy errors where um, there's more than one copy or something made, that's implicated in ADHD and some other diseases. Now, another problem of why we have to genetically adapt is we, we need a better immune system because disease has always been a major problem for all species, but particularly humans. And we now have a lot more humans for disease to spread around, and we travel a lot. Diseases are no longer isolated. And these problems actually are related uh, for a reason I'll mention. But the third reason we, uh, the third genetic issue we have to deal with is that we're going into a new ecology and we have to adapt behaviorally and genetically, but we definitely need to do genetic adaptation. Now, um, the, the one of the, the problems is that uh, what we call human progress, you know, preventing death of, by disease, living longer, and such. This is the removal of natural selection. Well, if you remove natural selection, you can get more of this genetic load. Now, it, it's true we do have to genetically adapt to the future, but the 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 real problem is the the uh, genetic load is, is where we get, we're going to get in trouble. Because it, it's, it, if you have that, it's sort of the opposite of, of evolution. The traits that have evolved recently that uh, are most important to us are what are most susceptible to breakage. Now, uh, what's, what's related to this is we try to defeat disease, and disease is particularly important because it's a general selective effect. It heats up the body, it puts toxin in the body, it stresses the body, and if there's a weak link, it fails natural selection. And removing that is um, in, in incredibly consequential. Well, I tried to figure out how we could solve this problem uh, and, and study it quite a lot. And, and after about 10 years of working on it, I said the only possibility of survival is uh, to use artificial selection. This would be uh, prenatal selection, uh, partly to avoid moral issues, but also because the uh, best way to do it, you, uh, if a couple, quote, wants to have children, they would fertilize, say, a hundred eggs taken from the female, and 
select the best few amongst that. Uh, this is actually done in a way, in, currently in in vitro uh, fertilization, where they look for the most robust, the fastest growing uh, zygote. But with as, as technology has advanced, we can also look at the genes themselves. And after the zygote has gone past about eight eight cells of growth, it starts sloughing off cells, and these can be genetically ad uh, examined to see one are there breakages and also what genes do they have from the parents because there's no guarantee that your children will have the genes you have what, what do you respect the most about yourself or your, or your mate wouldn't you want to make sure your children would inherit those genes there's no guarantee of that and that's the idea of this is that you would want to guarantee that the children get those genes now as I've said before, as soon as you talk about this, you've got to look at this in terms of morality. And as I've said, it's moral because, one, we won't survive without it. You can't have technology and, and, and civilization without using, uh, without doing something about what we've already changed. The other reason is, is it's about healthy children, healthy families, healthy communities, which is basically the foundation of morality, survival. Um, Another reason to do it is the cost effectiveness. Uh, this is a little more pragmatic, but um, it's not an expensive procedure. It's already being done to prevent early onset Alzheimer and diabetes. Um, and what's the cost of heart disease? Uh, what's the cost to a family of mental disease? They they said last year 20% of Americans experienced mental problems of some sort. I assume most of those were minor. But some are schizophrenia, which is so devastating, or dis uh, bad depression, anxiety, things that are crippling to people and really miserable. Uh, what about the cost of heart disease and cancer? These can be gotten rid of. This is true prophylactic medicine. And, and remember, this is the gift that keeps on giving. This is, this is your, your children inherit this. So there's basically... One of the other moral issues I'll mention here that's, that's interesting is uh, the the other thing is is those that have the least have the most to gain. I mean, if you're healthy, intelligent, beautiful, what you know, artificial selection might help you out, but most people aren't. Most people have family weaknesses. Most people are not extremely intelligent, extremely healthy. So. What is the value of that in personal terms? What is the value in monetary terms? I mean, I mean uh, one minor disease will cost more than, than just that, that uh, initial testing. Now, there's three levels of, of artificial selection. Selecting against bad genes, selecting for good genes, and selecting for hybrids to where the children get all the uh, traits of the parent. Now, there's not many bad genes. I mean, nature took care of that long ago. If, if you're alive, your parents were some survivors. But, but there are the broken genes I mentioned of genetic load, and that, that is critically important. There's genes that aren't necessarily good. Uh, sickle cell anemia is beneficial when there's malaria around, but it's very dangerous when, the, when there's not malaria, so it, it's situational. Um, there's also diseases we got from viruses, or probably genetics, that were injected from viruses. Now, again, some of those actually were beneficial, but most are not. Uh, and some of them can actually apparently make diseases. They can get activated and give you nasty diseases. So those are bad genes. There's not a lot of those. But what you're looking for is good genes. Um, there, there's, there's many different ways uh, to, so to speak, to make heart valves and, and to, to metabolize uh, cholesterol. Well, if one family is not prone to it and another family is, then you might want the genes from the family that's not. Um, this is true of, of uh, the, the, uh, hmm, the psychological diseases, cancers, certain traits are prone to cancer, some aren't. And there's going to be trade-offs. Now, so, so you want to select for the best genes. I mean, 
think your mate's good looking? Wouldn't you like that for your, your children? Now the third uh, case is the hybrid. Um, because that's how we've progressed genetically uh, in the time of the cities. Well, there haven't been a lot of mutations in the past 10,000 years, but peoples have come together. And over time, it, as they hybridized, the, the natural selection made it so that the, the survivors had the traits of both the parents. Now, there's a disadvantage to, to this because it doesn't always fit together right. But if you're using artificial selection, you can overcome that advantage, that disadvantage. Now, that is also interesting in that that's one of the reasons why, in a natural situation, racism is not such a bad idea because you're looking at other races as competitors. But if you're talking about natural selection, uh, probably artificial selection, then you're looking at other races and tribes as having genes that you or your descendants might want. And so they're not the disadvantage. Um, and this is where we can really progress. Now, some genes aren't going to fit together perfectly. Think of two different tribes, how the teeth come together. They might not fit good. But in terms of, of other traits, particularly the psychological traits, that which makes us human, these are going to fit together. Now, you've got, as, as I say, a lot of, of potential. The human race has so much diversity. You've got all the different races you can hybridize. You've got the different castes within the races. The scribes, the, the peasants, the craftsmen, the warriors, they can be hybridized. Hybridized. And you end up with this human with, with incredible adaptability. That's what this is about. And, and great intelligence, some smarts, and maybe some wisdom. Now, uh, one thing I don't mention is uh, engineered genes, uh, genetic engineering, creating new genes. Now, we might do this in the future. I like the idea of, of, of biological Bluetooth ability. But uh, this is not necessary to my uh, this. And just the description of this theory, and there's some real hazards, potential hazards to uh, artificial genes uh, that you've got to be very careful of. But I, I mostly don't mention it because it's not necessary. And this brings up the point of, okay, this is like a lot of technology. This is potentially fantastically dangerous. Um, but we don't have a choice for one, and two, uh, and later on, I talk more about the dangers, but the point is to balance it. Uh, it, it. It can be used safely if we use it with balance in mind. If we try ever go for fashion or height or something like that, it, then you're almost guaranteed to, to cause a problem, and, and it would be dangerous. As I say, I'll discuss it more, but the key to uh, gen doing artificial selection safely is keep it balanced. Now... Um, as I said, this is very economical. It looks moral. We don't have a choice as far as I can tell. The potentials are fantastic. As I said, well, everyone can have health, beauty, and brains, which will cause some confusion at points, but that's okay. We can deal with it. And um, there, there's another issue here that uh, we isn't mentioned much, that we're, we're also going to develop emotionally. And we don't talk about this emotions a lot because nobody understands them greatly, but uh, I'll discuss it further in the aspirations section. But this is where some real significance uh, could be. Uh, development of emotions may be very important. So in any case, this is what I see as one of the main components of how humans can survive into the future. Um, I don't think we have a choice. I think the potentials are fantastic. Uh, I actually, um, later on, I'll describe that after a lot of thought, I realize these potentials may be more than would be expected. I hope you found this interesting. Um, this is more detailed in my book, Transition. Uh, it, uh, I hope you see read or see more of, of this of the tra of the story of transition and i think you'll see a description of a very bright future for humanity thank you very much